Hello everybody and welcome back to part 2 of our Legion pre-event thingy where we're taking a look at the story and as it plays out in the background but uh, there's a couple things we need to mention. If First, you know, if you haven't seen part 1, I'll put it in the description, you can check that out. Uh, secondly, all of this was supposed to have voice acting, the, the files are even like in the... Um, in the computer, I don't know why I wanted to make that Zoolander reference, but the the files are in the like data mine for all of this stuff, and for whatever reason, there is no voice acting. There's um, there's a bit of complaining going on about it because the voice acting is pretty good, and they just weirdly enough, it's either bugged or it got left out. Um, but basically, what ends up happening, and the the text is on screen, so you can either read it or it's in the the chat window too. So that's an option, but. I, I will basically narrate what's happening in the background because it's all really interesting. So you end up pretty much right after the previous event, get a a messenger from, from Cadgar who actually bugs you nonstop unless you finally respond to him, uh, telling you to come to Dalaran. Now, Dalaran is over Deadwind Pass, directly over Karazhan. Why it's there, well, it's, it's trying to help protect against the uh, demon invasions, but I'll... I have a bone to pick with that later, but uh, basically, Cadgar, as a, as from the perspective of a Horde member, wants you to rejoin the Kirin Tor and kind of be united in taking out the Legion. So you go there, and, and someone has an issue with this, that someone being Jaina. I mean, she has a bone to pick with the Horde, as she rightfully should, based on some events that have happened thus far in the story, but she... Yeah, it just it feels a little it feels a little forced that she hates the horde that much. I mean, this is the strongest foe that we've ever faced, and we are going to need to band together. And most of the other Kieran Tor also agree on that. And to not have the horde a part of the Kieran Tor anymore is a pretty big deal. So Jaina ends up leaving the Kieran Tor um, just in like a huff and a, a fit of of rage now. There are some theories going out there that either Jaina is corrupted by the Legion in some way, or is in fact a Dreadlord. Um, and I want to—I want you to mark my words. Words. I'm gonna go with the—I'm uh, gonna go with the Dreadlord theory here. I, I don't—I don't necessarily think it's true, but the thing is, it would make a good story. And if it makes a good story, it usually tends to, you know, pan out to be the case that that—that's what would happen. So, I'm gonna go with she's a Dreadlord. She's leaving the Kieran Tor for whatever reasons. I don't care. Maybe just to try to make the uh, the the defense of Azeroth even weaker, because that's the only explanation I have for this. It's 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 pretty nonsensical just leaving in a like a fit uh, the way she does, and it, yeah, it just it feels weird. It feels weird to me. Then again, I'm not the biggest lore person, so maybe there are explanations for that. So you do that. Uh, Cadgar basically takes over her position. And then Bran shows up out of nowhere and it's like, dudes, my brother, Magni, who has been dormant as like stone for all this time, is is back awake and he's in Uldor. Uldor being the uh, the Titan raid from Wrath of the Lich King. It's like, okay, okay well, I, I guess we're going to Uldor. Um, and so you, Cadgar, and Magni all, or, or Magni and um, Bran all go back to... Uh, to Ulduar, and it's really cool coming back to this old raid. I have been farming it on a weekly basis for extra gold and the transmogrifications and everything, but it's it's cool to come back here regardless. You're you're meet, met meted meted met by this uh, caretaker who fits the the theme of Ulduar quite well, and he's like, yeah, you know, hey, how's it going, guys? Like this place is it's still kind of a mess after the adventurers came through and took care of the old god and everything. You know, no big deal. Don't worry. And then shortly thereafter, uh, you are ambushed by some old god stuff. I mean, it's pretty typical for... It's pretty typical for uh, Ulduar. I, I wouldn't expect anything of it. Whether it be yogg or not, uh, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily know. But there is a line said there, which is, You are a pawn of forces unseen. I think that I think that is really the biggest hint we're ever going to get about what's going on. And to some degree, there is a lot of speculation over what's happening here in the story for Legion. Because the Legion just showing back up with Gul'dan and everything. Sure, that could be explained by 
everything that really happened in Warlords and, and all that stuff. But at the same time, there's always someone in the background, right? Because we don't really know who the final boss of Legion is because we have two main raids, but they've said they're not going for a yearly, yearly schedule. So there's obviously another raid in the works um, F kind of for like the end of Legion. So I'm not really sure like who it would be. I have some theories that it might be Old God Influence doing this whole thing. That would make a lot of sense to me. Uh, I don't think we ever dealt with Nazoth, and he was a pretty big factor in Cataclysm and has been uh, in many regards to that. And it would be kind of cool to, to get that raid, and maybe that um, ties into the next expansion. Uh, then again, I think a lot of people have some really good theories that it could be Ashara, because Ashara has done a very good job a job of like uh, puppeting i think is the word for it f from a distance over the past like few expansions she's never really like her power has been seen you know you could see that in cataclysm you could see it in mists apparently you could see it in um some of this content because we're going to the broken isles and everything but yeah, it's very interesting. It could be her, and it could be that she's the last boss of this entire thing, or maybe she is set up uh, by, like, an old god, and then that's the, the whole thing there. Anyways, while that's all really cool, you find some Legion people. You kill the Legion people. Obviously, they're here trying to find something. And Magni goes on, who is now a diamond, by the way. He's just straight up a diamond. Um, he goes on to... <laughs> don't ask me. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't read it. But he goes on to just say that, boom, dropping the bomb... Uh, freaking Azeroth is a titan but that's actually not completely accurate because in the and I don't understand they just dropped this bomb they don't explain it at all in one of the books that they came out with to basically explain the story now with the fact that warlords changed the timeline um it, it basically reveals that inside of Azeroth is a titan now titan being the things that have created the planets and the universe and everything and there's a titan inside the planet so what the heck well obviously that explains as Cadgar says a great many things because like okay well that's why Azeroth is so important but like it, it feels like it came out of nowhere and it obviously did in this part of the story because they don't explain it at all they just throw this huge bomb at you I'm sure we will learn about that story because the whole thing here and you go into Algalon's room and you get a minor flashback, but it's just like voice acting we've already heard from the Algalon fight. Magni basically says that there's these things called the Pillars of Creation. So back when the back when the planet was formed and everything, there's these things that were created by the Titans as like great boons of power. And there there's five of them and they're the five pillars of creation. So now we have to go find these artifacts in order to shut down the portal that the, the Legion invasion is coming through. And it's like the main thing right now. Like we need to find these pillars of creation to shut this down. And it's even like in most of the gameplay, uh, you unlock a lot of stuff for your uh, your artifact weapon by finding the pillars of creation. It's like the, the kind of the main driving force as you're going into Legion. That's that's your like primary goal at the moment. Um, and they're within basically each of the ancient uh, like civilizations there. So I guess oh, I it just it feels uh, it feels kind of contrived, but I'm totally on board with it regardless because it is kind of cool. And the rest of the information on these so-called uh, pillars are back in Karazhan. So not only are they grabbing not uh, one old raid, which is Ulduar, to put you back into. That is very nostalgic. But then they're also throwing you back into Karazhan. Uh, so you go back there with with Khadgar. You leave Bran and Magni behind. You can assume that they have a, a pretty uh, lengthy chat. You know, Bran being his brother, someone who really does enjoy all the Titan lore. Um, and then, you know, Magni having obviously chatted with Titans, I guess. I don't know. What's going on with him? I, I probably should look up his story. It seems pretty interesting. Uh, in fact, he seems like he's in a really good position to potentially take over Thrall's new job. Uh, if Thrall level ever falls, maybe they're, maybe they're setting Thrall up for like a really cool sacrifice moment at the end of this expansion. And then Magni will take his place. I think that, that actually... Hey. Sounds very logical to me, but then again, I am not a huge WoW lord. I'm going to get a lot of this wrong, but at the same time, I, I, I like, 
I, I like coming at it from my perspective because my perspective is one of most players. In fact, I, I probably still even know more than most players about what's going on here. Uh, whereas you have these like crazy lore nerds who just know everything about this universe and everything that's going on. Um, like I said, I, I, I think it's cool to come from it as a perspective of most players and, and try to explain it that way, uh, which is the primary reason for making these videos. Anyway, so what you learn here with Khadgar is there were many apprentices to Medivh back in the day, and Khadgar was really the only one that was chosen to be, uh, or rather there were many people who wanted to be his apprentice, but but Khadgar was the only one chosen to be in that uh, Medivh was really smart. Everything that he was doing was actually a test for Khadgar, and Khadgar learned that. But in his absence, Khadgar came back uh, to Karazhan and set up a lot of defenses and stuff because this this tower is really important. It's got a lot of information on Azeroth here. It's the Guardian's Tower. Uh, the Guardian being the person that is basically assigned to guard Azeroth and is, is responsible for its well-being. And you see that with Medivh, like especially in Warcraft 3. It's kind of his big thing. He's like, you guys got to you know, the Legion's coming again. You got to watch out for this Archimon guy. And um, yeah, it's, that whole story is really cool in Warcraft 3. But with Medivh out of the picture, it's Khadgar's job. Or it, Khadgar, if you watch the little animated thing, is really cool. He, he comes back to Karazhan to, uh, to try to learn some information from all the old stuff about the Legion. And... Uh, instead is confronted by Dreadlord who is posing as Medivh's like spirit and uh, he's trying to get Khadgar to become the Guardian because the Guardian is a, a thing of power and power can be corrupted and that's the whole thing with the Legion is they want to corrupt Khadgar. Well, it turns out that's that he, he ends up seeing right through it. He decides, I don't want to become a Guardian because that's way too much responsibility for what's going on here. Like There, there shouldn't be one person with all the power. Um, but we need to find all this information on the pillars uh, first. So you go through the defenses of Karazhan. He kind of brings them down a bit and uh, teleports you up to the library where you fought, uh, oh crap, what was his butt? The mage, I don't remember his name. Really stupid fight. Uh, I'll talk about that in a moment. But it's this room that when you go into it, you're like, oh, this this place was definitely Burning Crusade because it looks a little outdated. Like the the book models on the wall, or not models, but the uh, texture on the wall to make it look like a bookshelf or like 10 times bigger than any book will ever be. It looks really funny. You'll see it in a, a second. But it's cool because you go there, um, you help him set up defenses, and then you're essentially waiting for him to try to find this book. And it's it's kind of, again, it's a little contrived, but it is really cool that you're back here and doing that kind of thing. Now, I wanted to briefly talk about the fact that patch 7.1 is Karazhan. Like, they're bringing Karazhan back. It's not, not a raid, but as a five-man dungeon with all of its bosses. And, you know, they're, up, they're updating all of this stuff, which is cool. But it is coming back as a dungeon, and I'm really looking forward to that because this place was really cool, despite this stupid boss. Uh, I, there was a mechanic with this boss in this room uh, where he was a mage, and it basically he would put a huge debuff on everybody, and if you moved, it would do like pulsing AOE damage. There was always one guy who would wipe the raid by moving, and it was the most annoying thing. And I, I want to just quickly say, like, I really hope that they keep that. I hope that all of those mechanics on those bosses are, are similar. Um, but it kind of makes you wonder, like, how is it coming back as the five-man dungeon if we've already defeated all these bosses, yet they're keeping all the bosses? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know how that's going to work, but apparently the opera event and stuff is still going to be there. I mean, I mean, the thing to remember is most of the stuff in here when we came in here during Burning Crusade were ghosts. So that that, that could be the case. Is they just come back again as ghosts or maybe it's like a Caverns of Time thing. I don't know. I'm looking forward to it, though. So what ends up happening here is these arcane golems come out uh, that are changed by the defenses. I don't know what ended up happening there, but the Legion is still breaking their way through and you need to buy time to find this book. Uh... <laughs> Speaking of the books, again, you could probably see all the giant freaking book models on the wall. It's, it cracks me up. It's, it's very antiquated. Uh, I, I like that. If they did that now, it wouldn't, 
it wouldn't look anything like this. They would probably change it up. But it, it, it works for this room because it's very whimsical anyways. You turn the golems back on onto your side. They go and defend against uh, the incoming legion forces. And then Cadgar basically channels an ability and finds the book. And you pick up the book off the table. It's all the information on the pillars. And you take that back to the uh, to the Kirin Tor. Now, this is the kind of the last thing that I wanted to talk about all this, which is that this was broken up into three weeks, uh, this content. So we had that first bit, the whole first part one was the first week when the pre-patch hit, and, or a week after the pre-patch hit. It was so good. Uh, I was like, man, if it, if it is all just like this, I'd be so happy. And then I heard, oh, we're going back to Ul, uh, Ulduar and Karazhan, and I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be so good. So we do all this. I'm really hyped. This this right here, finishing this up, was the end of part two. Right? So we had part one, came out one week. This was part two. So doing Ulduar and Karazhan. A good setup for what would be a cool part three, Except part three was one quest that took about two minutes. And that was it. And everybody who did it, I remember going onto the Reddit afterwards because I was so confused. I went onto the, the WoW subreddit and <laughs> it, it was just a ton of people going, wait, is that it? Is that, what, is that all it was? And you'll see what I mean. You, you go back and you turn this in and then we had to wait a week. And then the same thing happened as before. One of Cadgar's little minions comes and tries to talk to you like... You know, like Navi from from Zelda, just like, hey, listen, and just like constantly is berating you. And you're like, fine, I'll go do the quest. <laughs> and you could see him there. It's funny. But you go and you go back to Karazhan, or in this case, if you're already at Karazhan, you need to talk to Cadgar. And he's in the middle of Karaz or not Karazhan, but of Dalaran, still in a Deadwind Pass. You go talk to him. And he's like, there's some, I have a, I have a plan. I have a master plan about what's going to happen. And you, <laughs> you basically pick up this quest from him. He does a little bit of monologuing. It's what he does. I mean, it's, he's got to, he's got to bring some exposition out somehow. Um, but the general gist of it is that there are these like weird floating things in Dalaran that you have to like go disable. Uh, so you like go arcane, <laughs> arcane missile them with this little item he gives you. I'm fine with that, but again, remember that this is part three to this whole like three week thing that was leading up to the launch of Legion, and we were all really hyped. Like, what's going to happen? How much of the we were so excited that this was going to be a much larger part because the idea behind it is that we need to now move Karazhan, which I'm or not Karazhan, but Dalaran. I keep saying that. I'll, I'll and I'll talk about that in a second, but we need to move it to uh, the Broken Shores now that we're like really going to go attack the, the legion and go uh, do all that stuff so basically you disable these four anomalies and then that's that's that that's the end of <laughs> that's the end of that mission you go and talk to him he's going to summon the spirit of the first guardian which you then talk to that's all really cool i do enjoy that and then the rest of the kirin tor begin to channel a spell to move dalaran uh, back to the broken or to the broken shore and they do that for a week <laughs> and then where this all ends is where legion begins so legion will launch and then we'll dalaran will be moved we'll go get our artifact weapons yada 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 you get the idea but the fact that this quest legitimately you go and do it and then now we have to wait a week for them to channel this spell so this is the bone that i wanted to pick at like the very beginning which is that dalaran is above deadwind pass uh, we need to now move it again to the Broken Shore. Why Why didn't they just move it to the Broken Shore to begin with? Like, oh, we're under attack. Move it to the Broken Shore. That's the logical place to have it at the moment in order to help push back the Legion. Instead, they're like, let's move it to the bottom of the Eastern Kingdoms where the only thing in range really is Westfall. Like, really? You could have put it over Orgamar, and then at least you still get two of the invasions that are close by. You could put it over Stormwind, you'd still get two of the invasions that are fairly close by. Like, it it makes... It feels like a plot device, right? Like, they were just trying to put it out there to, to explain some plot away. Either way, you do the first Guardian stuff. It is really cool. Um, talking to him and, and kind of learning, like, what his whole 
process or his his thoughts on the thing are uh, we have to fill uh, find these pillars that's all the thing but that's that's basically the end of all the the pre-launch story from here on we start moving the city we go get our artifact weapons and legion launches and all of that fun stuff and i'm really excited for that but it, it feels very anticlimactic but the story thus far has been set up really really well for the expansion to be pretty freaking awesome so if you have any questions or comments let me know i'm sure you guys will correct me on a ton of lore stuff and i'm totally okay with that i know again i'm not i'm not a huge lore nerd i don't know as much as everybody else does but i know enough to get me hyped for this expansion and uh yeah and I, and I legitimately am really hyped but with all that being said i can't wait for tuesday to come and uh i, I kind of wish that this uh, this quest ended a little bit better eh but we shall see you guys next time.